Hey everyone, thank you for listening to the inaugural Be Wise Fitness Podcast. My name is Barry Wise. I am a personal trainer and nutrition coach. I specialize in functional movement. Um, I work with a bunch of different individuals, um, but my main line of work tends to be with just regular folks, kind of that that over 30 range, uh, maybe coming off of you know, an injury, uh, just getting released from physical therapy, or maybe they have a background um, where they might have had issues um, in the past with certain types of training. They're looking for kind of a different, safer way uh, to approach things. Um, I have, you know, coached um, athletes as well um, of varying degrees, uh, as well as former athletes, uh, people who still want to maintain kind of that same level of general performance. Uh, but aren't uh, you know, don't have quite as much required of them now, but they still want to be able to maintain kind of that same level of, of movement, um, optimal range of motion, optimal strength, kind of so on and so forth. So I thought this would be a great time to do a first podcast because one, there's very, very little to do right now. Uh, we are in the middle of essentially a lockdown here in the state of Oklahoma and across the country due to COVID-19. Um, regardless of what you think, what your, your stance is on different things, the fact is that um, it's safer if we all don't go out and gather in gigantic groups. So, in the light of not gathering in a gigantic group, I'm sitting here by myself talking into a microphone Hopefully you will listen. If you don't listen, doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, But if you do listen, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I love fitness. I love nutrition. I love all things uh, sports in general um, outside of baseball. Not a huge baseball fan, but uh, don't tell my father-in-law that. Um, I do, however, respect a lot of the the mechanics of what they do and the the work that goes into uh, being that kind of athlete. So in this podcast, I wanted to try and keep it under 15, maybe 20 minutes. I just wanted to cover some general stuff, things that I'm getting either from clients, things I'm seeing posted that I would love to to answer. Um, I want to try and make it as informative and as useful as possible without being ridiculously long. I know some people, myself included, love that long-form podcast. Some people would rather just have something that kind of covers them on their way to and from work, something they can listen to during a workout, and then kind of be done. Uh, They don't want to have to break it up into multiple days, as I do with uh, some of the things I listen to. Um, So one of the main things I wanted to cover that I'm hearing from clients, um, as well as kind of just general things I'm I'm reading and kind of where the, the popularity of things is right now, where the where the fitness world is at the moment, is what to do when you don't have access to a gym. What to do when you don't have access to barbells, traditional strength training equipment, uh, the room to be able to run and to do different things outside of just going outside. Um, What do you do in those cases? How do you maintain strength, Um, maybe not maintain strength? Um, what are things uh, you can do um, in replace of that when you don't have that? So that was kind of the first area I wanted to, to tackle. Uh, so as we all know, everything is closed down. There's not a whole lot of things open. So gym access is very, very limited at the moment. Um, however, um, given that, there are so many things that you can still do at home. Um, but what we need to first be okay with is allowing ourselves to to change our focus. So one of the main things that that trainers will tell you, uh, especially those who deal with strength athletes, right, is in order to get strong, in order to improve at something, your your goal, your your narrow band of what you're working on has to be be set and it has to be specific. You have to know where you're starting from and where you're trying to get to. Uh, So what that means is sometimes having multiple different goals, multiple different things you're trying to achieve all at once, say you're giving yourself a 45-day period, 
um, having a bunch of different goals that maybe aren't specifically related or they're not kind of closely enough related on the Venn diagram of fitness goals, um, if they're not closely enough related, they're going to be very, very, very hard to achieve, right? So, you know, a, a good example would be um, trying to lose weight, but then also trying to add 40 pounds to your bench press. They both can be done. However, to do those things optimally, you need to have a, a goal in mind. You need to kind of pick one. And with that goal, set the, the, the layout of what it is that you need to do to get that accomplished. And sometimes uh, those goals don't necessarily mesh with each other. So getting stronger might provide, uh, might entail a higher uh, caloric, more of a caloric surplus when eating, which maybe isn't conducive to losing weight. It's not to say that you can't get stronger um, when you lose weight, right? Especially in, in your relative strength. But you do want to keep in mind that it is, is going to be difficult to execute both. So the reason I bring that up is during this time, uh, the first thing we need to be okay with is just accepting reality, accepting that we don't have this access. So, you know, are you going to be able to bench the same when we get back into the gym here, you know, two or three weeks down the road? Probably not. So the first thing is to just let it be right? Just kind of live in this moment that you're in. Understand that, you know, some strength may be lost, but be okay with changing what your goals are right now. Be okay with setting a new goal during this time period that still allows you to stay motivated, uh, but isn't something that's going to constantly stress you out for the, you know, just for the sake of stressing you out, right? We want to have something that we can that we can set, want to have a goal that we can set, that we can get to, uh, that's attainable in the situation we are in right now. Um, so one of the goals that you can do, um, certainly the just kind of laying out examples here, is of course weight loss, right? Body fat or body fat loss, uh, to be more specific. Um, in the times we're in, um, right now, conditioning is something, um, you know, kind of that, that high intensity interval training, uh, training that doesn't require a lot of different equipment that generally requires your body, um, kind of cardiovascular training, if you will. Uh, that type of training is very, very doable at the moment. Uh, so having goals like a just weight loss goal um, would be something that uh, could certainly uh, be done or be accomplished, right? When you don't have a gym to go to, Trying to set new bench press PRs uh, by doing push-ups in your home might not be uh, something viable, right? It might might not be where we're at right now. So just being okay with kind of relinquishing the control that you want to have, um, it does two things. One, it allows you to succeed in whatever goal it is that you are setting. And two is it decreases the stress that you feel from not achieving the other goals, right? And the other things that you want to be doing or think you want to be doing at this time. Uh, so what is it that you can do at this time? Uh, since the traditional kind of more barbell movements, things that require, you know, a facility are out uh, this is a big opportunity, especially for those who have never focused on it before, to allocate some time uh, to improving your, your balance, uh, to improving kind of the structural integrity of, of your joints, uh, to improve the ability for your joints to move through full range of motion. Uh, right now, we are being stuck in a position where we don't have a whole lot of options. So use this as a time of being pigeonholed to say, you know what, I don't have a whole lot of things I can do, but I want to put my all into something. I'm going to dip my foot, not just my foot solely into this pond, but I'm going to dive all in. So in terms of programming or what that would look like, um, 
it would be a little bit more of a, a rehabilitative approach. So take this time to recover uh, first. Uh, use this as a time of kind of forced recovery time, if you will. Um, I know it's an extended period of recovery, but think of it as that. Um, and I think changing your perspective here versus focusing on what you can't do um, is definitely the, the better, um, more least stressful or less stressful way to go about this. Uh, so if you can't change your situation, right, change your attitude about the situation and change your perspective, right? So in this case, um, can't go to the gym to do this or that, but I can do this. I'm going to take that same energy that I otherwise would have put into the barbell movements and really put it into this other stuff. Uh, so that's where I work with a lot of clients um, in improving kind of the soundness or structural integrity, um, the, kind of the, the basic strength and range of motion of joints. So what I would recommend that uh, folks do is start today, kind of look at your body overall, you know, as a kind of an entire piece of equipment um, and break things down joint by joint. And one of the things I ask clients to do is be as honest as they can with themselves about what they feel, where they feel it, when they feel it. Um, and start from the ankle or start from the, the head and neck and work down or up, right? And what you'll find if you really start thinking, you know, deeply about how you feel, how things are impacted in certain workouts, you really find that there are some areas that you can improve, uh, some areas that you can devote some time to, especially in the situation we're in right now. Um, where you can come back, you know, better, stronger, um, have more um, strength and, and better conditioning in those joints uh, to actually add some weight to the bar or jump higher. You know, a lot of times we put those things off. Uh, we kind of drive through injury, if you will. Um, and here is this time that we're being given uh, to where we are forced to have to think outside the box with our, our training or do things that we maybe wouldn't normally do. And this is a chance to not only do those things, but to put all of our energy and effort into it uh, because we don't have uh, that energy or effort being expended really anywhere else, else with uh, some of the bigger movements, some of the things that are uh, quite a biological physiological cost uh, to us. So we have the energy to do those things. Let's really maximize it. Uh, use this time uh, wisely. I would love to dive deeper in further podcasts on how you go about improving uh, kind of the, the structural integrity, the soundness of joints and um, decreasing some of the clinking and clanking and the pain that we feel. Uh, would love to dive into that deeper later on. Uh, so another thing I wanted to go into uh, was nutrition with people sitting at home. Um, there's so much more temptation. Um, work can sometimes be a great distraction from eating, and a lot of people aren't working right now, um, and that's that's pretty horrible. Um, but we do have to deal with the fact that we're home, um, we're bored, uh, there's a lot of things um, that are in a refrigerator or maybe in our pantry uh, that we wouldn't normally eat if we weren't home, but we're home, our kids are around, we're you know, not really engaging in a whole lot of different things. What are some things that I can do uh, to ensure that uh, my family is uh, being fed, that I'm being fed um, you know, nutritiously, um, and that we're not kind of falling um, you know, ill to those temptations? So number one is don't stress about it so much. I know that's kind of been the theme of this podcast, but sometimes it is okay to just kind of let things be, um, not overthink or uh, feel guilty or, or beat yourself up um, over decisions that you make during a time that is really, really stressful. Um, it is okay in certain instances for certain periods to just be okay with, with doing this or doing that. 
Um, I think that's important, and I think that's a healthy way of living and going about life. Not to say that we make it our long-term nutrition plan, right, or that we do it forever, but I do think that there is something to be said to lowering that level of rigidity that we're trying to hold ourselves to on kind of a normal basis. These aren't normal times, so the actions that we take aren't necessarily going to be common or normal. Uh, So as far as feeding yourself, feeding your family, uh, what do we do um, in situations where things are scarce? Um, The biggest thing that I advise people to do is, one, keep it simple. Uh, Sometimes trying to eliminate full food, stick to a specific kind of diet where maybe things aren't so accessible in the uh, stores in the markets right now. Uh, Sticking to kind of a basic principle or layout that you can follow. So one of the examples that I use for clients and one of the methods that we uh, use is just how the plate is laid out or how the meal um, is structured. Uh, in other words, when you look at your plate, um, what are the ratios of, of what you're eating, right? Don't stress about um, necessarily the, the actual grams of protein or the grams of carbohydrates, the grams of fats. Um, look at your plate. Um, do you have enough vegetables? Is your protein on there? Is, is it enough or is it moderate enough for what your goals are? Um, are, are your carbohydrates, um, kind of your starchy carbs, are they, are they at a decent uh, proportion based on the rest of your meal? Uh, these are really, really easy visual things that when you're feeding yourself or a bunch of people uh, that you can quickly kind of go through, quickly assess whenever you're making a meal or, or designing your plate uh, to uh, partake in some delicious food. Um, it's an easy way to go about things that I think is um, not only good for times like this, but long term. But kind of my, my main point still stands is this really isn't a time to stress out intensely um, or maybe start that new diet, if you will, that you're wanting to start, right? These are times where you let the small things be the small things. Um, you handle the big things as best you can. When it comes to your training, you try and stay as active as possible, but don't stress over times where maybe you're forced to miss something. Uh, just get back on the horse tomorrow. When it comes to nutrition, again, we have a lot of obstacles in front of us. Uh, most, most people do right now. You do the absolute best you can with what you have, right? You stick to some really basic principles. You give your, yourself some really basic guidelines to follow. And you just live with that for this moment. Uh, That's okay. When it comes to living a quote-unquote healthy lifestyle, um, it's about the long game, right? So I look at things in, you know, month, year, five-year, kind of 10-year plans or windows. And when we look back on this, yes, this was awful during, but five years from now, this is essentially just a blip on the radar, right? So well, we don't necessarily need to place as much emphasis on doing things right or being as perfect with our nutrition or our training as we maybe think we need to, right? We still have a lot of time left. Uh, things aren't going to come, you know, crashing to a total screeching halt. Uh, we will make it out of this thing. So I hope, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, what I've provided you with today. I hope things were informative. Um, please like it and share it. You know, let me know what you think. Um, I would love to do more of these in the future. Uh, one of the things I do want to do is answer questions at the end. Uh, that's something that I love doing. Uh, something that I enjoy doing. Uh, sometimes it forces me to put some time into some research and kind of thinking about things differently. Uh, so one of the, the very first inaugural question of the Be Wise Fitness Podcast is when looking at different options for programming for oneself, how do you know which direction is best? There's so much info out that can be difficult to navigate for someone without training background. That's a really good question. Um, One of the things that I really urge people to do, uh, especially the kind of clients I see, 
is don't necessarily be so concerned with the programming early on. Um, I would first kind of concern yourself with understanding how the body moves, understanding what patterns, um, what movements um, your body needs to be able to perform, to perform, to keep you safe and to have you kind of strong in the, in the basic way of moving, right? That's how I generally look at things uh, with a lot of the people that I see. Now, in order to do that, um, it may take a program. So one of the, I think the big things to, to notice or to think about is always try and reach out to, to a trainer or strength coach um, as far as, you know, what programs are going to be, be safe for you, um, are going to be uh, things that you can recover from, you know, what were they designed uh, to do. Right. So a lot of times when you look at these stereotypical programs that you find on bodybuilding.com or whatnot, um, sometimes they're designed around, you know, a, an intermediate to advanced level athlete. Maybe that um, athlete is taking performance enhancing drugs. So the amount of volume or total work in these exercises or in these um, in, in the training program is something that this athlete can handle. Um Maybe that athlete does this full time, so their amount of volume and training um, can be um, supported by eating all the time, right? So whenever we train, there's always a biological, physiological cost to what we do, and we have to support that with nutrition. Um, and for a lot of folks, eating all day long isn't in the cards. So we have to make sure that the volume we're doing uh, the levels that we're training at are recoverable uh, for our schedule, for what we're doing, for our, you know, for our bank account, you know, if you will. Um, that being said, I guess kind of the main points is um, first have a goal in mind, a very specific goal. So there's so many great programs out there. Um, they're they're starting strength, um, five three one. Um, I design programs that are more around the kind of functional movement, working in the basic movement patterns. So you're pushing, you're pulling both vertically, horizontally, um, being able to squat and deadlift. Um, I generally, you know, live in certain rep ranges for most clients, you know, kind of starting out. Uh, rarely do I deviate from those uh, rep ranges kind of client to client um, because I see a lot, a, lot, a lot of similar folks, even though we're all different. Uh, physiologically, we're all very, very similar. So um, I always make sure that what I'm doing, you know, sort of fits what their goals are. But um, I think it's more important about knowing what your goals are um, that you want to get out of a program, doing as much research as you can into uh, what training volume, what intensity levels um, are needed to hit that goal. So if you're trying to jump higher, um, your intensity level with your exercises um, and your total volume or work done um, is going to be different than somebody who is trying to squat more, right? The, the training is going to look a little bit different. There may be some areas where things kind of kind of cross or overlap, um, but generally um, it may look a little different. Uh, so the main thing you want to be mindful of is, you know, is, is what you're doing or the program you're, you're taking on. Um, is it something that you're capable of in your current physical state? And is it something that you're going to have the ability uh, to, to recover from? Sometimes you don't know that until you do it and you try it. Um, I always tell people that, that one of the main things people don't do is they don't stick with a program long enough. Always try and give things a good solid 30 days before going away. Uh, that being said, if you're newer to lifting, specifically in kind of the barbell movements, um, really anything is going to work as long as the volume isn't just totally excessively overdoing it. Um, if it's anywhere within kind of a, a, an appropriate rep range and set range, um, you're going to get stronger. As long as you're, you're eating enough um, and the, the food you're eating is, is nutritionally dense, right? Um, you're going to get stronger and you're going to get results. So have specific goals, research as much as you can, uh, reach out to, to a trainer, but it really comes down to, um, knowing what you want to get, um, out of your, out of your training. 
and looking for um, what best uh, fits that. So another question I had was when doing intermittent fasting, is it more important to consume food earlier in the day or later? I'm cutting now and I've been waiting to eat until around 3 p.m. And then I eat until around 7 p.m. ish. Um, I eat very clean, but am concerned about consuming these calories right before I sleep. Um, I don't think there's a hard and fast right and wrong here. Um, it's a little bit kind of trial and error, if you will. Um, I n know people who are on both sides of this. Uh, so in the research that's been done, without getting too study specific, um, when they've researched in, in things like mice, um, other animals, they have found that there can be negative consequences to eating too close to before bed. Um, so, and that's been kind of the general thought for a very, very, very long time. Uh, in recent years, um, I think there was a study out of, out of Florida State that someone did um, that did kind of question this. Uh, it wasn't a massive sample size, but I believe the results that they found were it, it wasn't necessarily dependent on kind of when you ate, how close to bed that you ate, um, or even the amount. It was how, how um, complex was what you're eating. Uh, so was it just kind of strictly a protein source? Was there a bunch of varying kind of nutrients or macronutrients in this meal? Um, if the meal was simple, uh, I, I believe they found that uh, there was some uh, improvements physiologically um, from, from a muscle gaining standpoint. Um, I'll actually go back and double check this and, and vet that on my next podcast. But um, there's, there's varying opinions um, as far as what's what's acceptable. Um, I find that you kind of just need to try things out. Um, I'm a late eater personally. Um, I, I tend to start eating about an hour and a half after I wake up. I don't immediately consume food. Um, and then I also do eat later into the evenings. Um, the main issue with eating late into the evening, I believe for most healthy individuals, and I believe the study I referenced, um, the individuals that did kind of see some success from eating later were healthier young adults. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, the Kind of the, the different populations of people are going to uh, reap different um, rewards or consequences uh, for eating later just based on their where they're at. Um, in their, in their, in their life. Um, so I'm a late eater. Um, I've found that I can get, you know, some decent results, uh, in what I'm doing. Um, and, and whether it be strength gains, whether it be, um, just how I'm feeling body fat loss, um, I can still, uh, get those eating later in the evening. Um, that being said, kind of going back, uh, you can, um, have some, kind of immediate consequences. So one of the things with eating late in the evening is it can cause some gastrointestinal issues, uh, especially if maybe what you're eating has dairy in it. You have maybe a mild dairy allergy. Your body just doesn't quite mesh with um, lactose. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, maybe at that point, you know, considering, you know, if you do have to eat late and maybe dairy is not something that you can avoid, you know, considering digestive enzymes, um, is certain, certainly something that that's safe that you can try, you know, just to kind of see what it, what it does for you, how it works. Um, but you can have some discomfort there. Um, you can get night sweats, um, and you could just generally not sleep as good. So it's important to weigh the biological costs of getting that extra protein in at night versus getting effective sleep. So if you are going to experiment with eating later in the evening, if you have something, an app or a watch or something that monitors your sleep, really put that monitoring into full effect during that time uh, to see if what you're doing uh, from a nutrition standpoint, nutrient timing, uh, see if that changes your, your sleep patterns. Uh, sleep, I think, is, if it's not number one, it's 1B in terms of, you know, in, in importance level uh, to getting stronger, losing body fat, 
gaining, holding on to muscle. Uh, sleep is where, where muscle is made, where we sleep is where we get stronger to our body recovers. It's how we get smarter, right? Our, our brains, you know, creating new connections, um, while we're sleeping that that's how we improve, right? Sleep is a mechanism that allows us to get better as a human being. So it's important that we don't, uh, neglect it or, um, not see the, the value in it. So I think I'll end it there. Hopefully, I went way longer than I kind of thought I would, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, kind of right around 30 minutes. Uh, please let me know what you guys think. Uh, my Instagram is at BeWiseFitness, and my Facebook is www.facebook.com forward slash B-W-I-S-E Fitness Official. That's facebook.com forward slash BeWise Fitness Official. You can also contact me at 918-650-6062. If you have any training related questions, um, please call, text. I'd love to hear from you. Message me on any of my uh, social media platforms that I have. But I'm signing off. You guys have a great day and stay safe. <laughs>